So today I'm going to talk about action grounded in faith, not perfection, and how we really can move forward despite, you know, when we feel stuck, um, when we feel like we can't get going with things, uh, which I think happens to us all sometimes, doesn't it? It re- it really does. Um, and I think waiting for things to be perfect can be a huge cause of this. So let's start there. Let's start with perfectionism, that old chestnut, eh? Um, <laughs> and do let me know in the comments if you can relate to um, perhaps being a perfectionist perhaps being a recovering perfectionist i think that's where i would pop myself now perhaps we should have a group perfectionists anonymous <laughs> for those people who um, would like to step away from perfectionism because it can really really hold us back can't it and and the thing to see is it is an absolute illusion and it's not really grounded in the essence of who we truly are and and we can see that in nature, can't we? Because nature doesn't engage in this perfect thing. You know, it's autumn here where I am in the world and there are trees that have completely lost their leaves. Um, there's trees that are midway through the shedding. There's some that won't lose them at all because they're evergreen and they don't engage with this whole <laughs> tree leaf dropping thing in the autumn. And it's really cool to see how, you know, that there, there's just no resistance there. There's just what is. Every single tree's leaves are slightly different colours. They're all different shapes. So, well, how do how would we decide which of those were perfect? Well, we say the oak is perfect and its way of shedding leaves is perfect. So all the other trees, the pine and the birch and the, I'm trying to think of sycamore and the chestnut they're all wrong they're all wrong they're all doing it wrong and well we wouldn't do that would we we just wouldn't it wouldn't even come up for us to um judge I guess um ju- judge the, the the perfection of that it is perfect as it is but of course so much of the time we we're waiting for the perfect moment the trees aren't waiting for the perfect moment to shed their leaves they're just doing it they're just getting on with it they're just doing their thing their shedding of leaves when they think it's right not that they think about it but it's just happening nature is just happening so so often we are waiting for the perfect moment or some kind of certainty in order to start and one of the things that I find often comes up for this around this with perfectionism and with not getting started, one of the first things I notice that comes up is this um, this sense of having to have certain things in place before we can take action, like like our purpose, like that's a corker, isn't it? I think there's a lot of toxicity around the word purpose, um, and that can really come up. So let's wait until I know what my purpose is, wait until I know that I've I've completely sussed what that is before I can take action. Well, purpose to me is, is a present moment thing. My purpose right now is creating this video and then my purpose will be to be sharing the video and posting the video or do what else I'm going to do with the video after after I've actually shared it or recorded it or done it live or whatever I'm doing it, it, that is that is my purpose my purpose right now is making a video that's it then my purpose I think after this video is going to be to eat my evening meal because it happens to be the evening when I'm recording this which is not like me I normally do things like this during the day but fancy to change today <laughs> and it's just the way it worked out so this this pressure to have our purpose stitched up to have everything right before we can take action can become exhausting. It can really come exhaust, become exhausting. Now, what I'm pointing to as a solution to that, because I'm sure you would like a solution, is that actually what's really happening, and I think this is the key, this is not me saying this is how to do it, 
This is what's really happening. Really, progress is happening all the time. And it's really happening from all the small steps that we take in the present moment. And, and that's it. Now, of course, wrapped around that is how it's supposed to be, how it's got to be perfect, how this doesn't match with my perfect um, purpose, how this doesn't quite fit. But what I'm pointing to here is that there is there's something about trusting the journey forward or, or, or having something that's sort of grounded in presence rather than perfection grounded in just trusting that we can take the next step and for me the guidance for that now is is the emotional state more and more I find myself connecting to that connecting to the present moment connecting to myself pausing for long enough to really see what is arising as the next action to take. Now, for me today, because I was feeling grotty today, um, just very tired, I've, I've got this um, wrist injury and I've had a sprained ankle as well at the same time, so my sleep's just been a little bit out of kilter, um, having been really good, I've had really good sleep in recent months, but the last few weeks it's just been a little bit off, I think, because I'm struggling to get comfortable and position my arm so it doesn't hurt. And so I am I was tired today, um, I was really feeling it, plus it's just after the full moon, which can be a time for me when I can feel a little bit ugh. And so my purpose today was to have a nap like a nice Monday afternoon nana nap <laughs> that was a good hour or so, a bit longer than that, I think, actually, um, because that just, it just was the thing that made the most sense. Now, I, I heard, you know, that was the inspired idea to have a nap, to listen to my body to have a nap. Now, of course, immediately after that, a lot of thinking came in about having a nap. Well, yes, but look at all the things that are on your list. Look at all the things you're supposed to be doing. You want to get you want to get these parts of your business sorted out. What do you think you're doing having a nap? Like there was a, a lot of yakety yakety yak, um, and and of course that then brought an uncomfortable feeling. But I I knew I, I knew more clearly I think that my my faith in my body kind of feeling tired and my head feeling quite heavy it didn't make sense to push against that it made more sense to have a nap and I think what I usually find when that happens is that the next day there's a lot more energy because I've had more rest and I'm ready for the next inspired action so that's the first thing is you know to really trust more I'm trusting more my body these days in terms of that guidance and watching out for the immediate reaction that comes from our conditioned thinking. My conditioned thinking is very much about being busy and my self-worth is related to busyness. It has been my whole life, I think. Busyness, I often say, is my drug of choice in order to avoid feeling any feelings. But, um, but so for me to nap... You know, of course, my mind says no to that. You need to be busy. You need to be getting on with things. So that that's one thing is, is to ch sort of connect to your body. Then the next thing is, the, the last thing really is, it's now. You know, that there's this sense, I think, from our upbringing that there's somewhere to get to that, if we just work, 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 and we just keep going, keep doing what everybody else is telling us to do and keep following some kind of process somebody else has told us or whatever else, that at some point we will, da, you know, we'll reach the point of peace and it'll all be okay. And it, it's just actual nonsense. If, if we're not in the present moment, 
taking the small actions step by step, apart from anything else, we're probably not enjoying ourselves. And, and, and what's going to happen as we come up with the next small action is, yes, there's going to be some resistance sometimes. Yes, the predictable BS of the mind is going to come in and say, well, you can't do that. You're going to look stupid. That's not going to work. It's going to, it's going to take too long. That's probably one of my favorite. You're going to, it, it, you know, overthink it, feeling very overwhelmed about it. That will come up. But actually, if if we just, if we notice all of that, and that's it really, is notice how predictably your mind has got a tale to tell about how it's not going to work or how that's not the right way or it's going to it's not perfect or um you know you 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 can't do that that's the stuff that makes us feel really stuck but have you noticed really stuck but have you noticed how predictable that is like that i had a really helpful insight about that last week that no matter what inspired idea you have there will be something that comes up invariably that says you can't do that in some way shape or form either you haven't got the time or it's too complicated too complicated it's going to involve lots of faffing around in my website or you know that's generally my stuff it, you, you're not capable of it you can't do it to the right level of perfection you're you're an imposter how dare you you know like all that stuff that comes up but when we see that that is just part of the process that is fairly predictably I mean, the lovely Dominic Scafidi last week said um, it's boringly predictable, absolutely, it's boringly predictable how much when we have an inspired idea, the absolute nonsense of the mind and the, and the, res the resistance comes in. So if we can start to see that, we can start to move forward and not have that stickers to the sometimes it feels like somebody I don't know about you but sometimes it feels like somebody's sat on my chest not allowing me to actually move um because it feels so it feels so tight and constricted but it, it when you just see oh yeah I have an inspired idea and my mind says blah, blah, blah about it it's absolutely amazing how much easier it gets to move forward so hopefully that's helpful Hopefully really connecting to, you know, the, the faith, the aliveness of what's alive within you to take the next step and to just know that when that, that BS is making your body feel terrible, that's just such a powerful clue that you're believing something that isn't true. So I hope, I hope that's been helpful today. I see that I'm quite dark, but it's dark. <laughs> I've got three lights on. <laughs> Still, I look dark. So let me know in the comments if that's been useful. Uh, drop me a message with anything you want to know or you want to connect on a deeper level. Um, take care. Lots of love. I'm Claire Downham, transformational life coach and mentor and founder of the Thriving Woman Approach. Take care. Lots of love.